I'm Cara Burke, World Language Team Leader, Spanish Teacher, Learning Specialist, JV Tennis Coach, and Dorm Affiliate at the Rectory School. So I'm the World Language Team Leader, so I oversee changes to curriculum, working with my department, collaborating a lot. The other Spanish teacher, we are constantly, you know, sharing resources, making sure we're kind of on the same page and brainstorming different ideas of how we can create classes that are fun and strong. And we have a nice department where we can work together. I'm also a Spanish teacher, like I said, so I teach four Spanish classes. This year I'm teaching Spanish 1A, Spanish 1, and Spanish 2 level. I'm also a learning specialist. This year I'm working with a student from Mexico um, and we gear more towards ELL kind of activities, improving his English. And then in the spring, I help with the tennis program. My teaching style is very student-centered and I find that the activities that work the best are a lot of group work where there are speaking opportunities at hand. Whether I give them a prompt, an open-ended a prompt, works well with the older grades, but I find in Spanish 1A and Spanish 1, where their vocabulary is limited, giving them more structured questions to ask, you know, whether it be peers, whether it be groups, the back and forth, just trying to create that environment where they feel comfortable speaking and learning the language. So we follow the scope and sequence of a textbook, but I find that because I've been here for 10 years, I like to try to bring in a lot of my own resources, whether they be created from experience of how can I make some activities more engaging. And the ultimate goal is how can I get students to want to speak the language? I think um, a lot of students have grown up if they've been taking a second language, you know, drilling verbs and a lot of more grammar focused, which is definitely important um, to know. but. I think the ultimate goal that we've agreed as in a department is how do we feel comfortable speaking the language. So we offer Spanish, we offer computer science, and then if a student would like to take a language, we have an online opportunity where students could take uh, Latin, Chinese, or French. So before coming to Rectory, I was a secondary school teacher. I primarily worked with high school age students. And whereas it was, you know, Spanish one level, Spanish two, Spanish three, I found the biggest difference um, teaching high school versus middle school is that, I don't know, I think middle schoolers have this incredible level of curiosity um, and interest that really is sparked in this middle school age group. I find and I, I enjoy their more light bulb moments um, in the middle school age group where, oh my gosh, I'm actually saying, you know, a conversation in Spanish one week where the previous week they couldn't even put, you know, a few words together. Um, so I think that level of interest, curiosity, fun too, uh, in the middle school has really, I don't know, I would say is why I've really enjoyed teaching the middle school level compared to the high school level. I find with this age group, a lot of variety and changing of different activities is key. I think every, you know, 10, 15 minutes to try to change something. Um, whether it be we're doing a writing activity, okay, the first 15 minutes and then the second 15 minutes, let's change it to a listening activity. Creating the routine, very important at this age level, but also more variety um, and a little more direction as opposed to maybe a little more independence in that high school level. I think I became inspired to teach Spanish primarily because of my experience in the classroom and the way that my Spanish first Spanish teacher, Mr. Billsbury or Senor Billsbury, um, made on me. I think he would walk into the classroom every day with incredible energy. He was practically sweating. He was just so excited and interested in teaching the language and hoping that his students felt the same way as he did towards learning another language. So it stood out very much so. He would be moving around the classroom so much, extremely energetic, using all sorts of props and different things, and just spoke so beautifully the language that it sparked my interest very early on. And he just made it so fun and interesting um, that I was very curious to continue it. But it also inspired how I wanted to teach in the classroom. Um, I think using different realia, moving around, um, using different activities, keeping the kids interested and engaged 
uh, really, he, he instilled that on me early on. And I think seeing Spanish as very interesting and fun to learn. My first uh, experience studying and traveling abroad was my junior year at Hamilton College, where I was there in the spring term and I lived with a host family. And there I was, you know, they were very strict and you could only speak Spanish. And the host family that I lived with knew minimal English. So that really, you know, sparked the need to always be speaking Spanish. And I think, you know, being immersing yourself completely in the culture and language is how you really understand um, the language. That furthered when I went with the language program to get my master's at Middlebury College, where I studied on the Vermont campus for a summer, and then I lived in Madrid, Spain for an entire year. My experience living in Madrid was wonderful. It's one of my favorite cities, and I completely immersed myself. So I just remember walking to class through the neighborhoods of Madrid, stopping at my favorite fruit store to grab these huge, awesome yellow apples, incredible walks through the city. That was a goal of mine to really understand the city by foot. Um, so I found just loving everything I heard, I saw, and of course the food, the people that I met, the warmth, um, I would love to go back. I have a passion for food and that started in my grandmother's kitchen. I have very fond memories of going to Swampscott, Massachusetts, um, walking into my grandmother's kitchen, and she said, come over here, smelling just incredible foods um, and always insisting that I try whatever she's making. Um, so that sharing of food, I think, has, go has always been with me. Uh, when I moved to Spain, I lived with a host family, and the same idea, um, my senora would invite me into her kitchen and say, try this gazpacho or try this, obviously in Spanish. Um, but the idea of being really open to different types of flavors and seasonings and foods just really spurred my sister and my interest in trying to create our own. My sister and I started our blog, Twin Tastes which features our recipes and different experiences and travel inspired by food. It originated in Boston when we were living together in the North End of Boston, Little Italy, um, and it has spanned and continued with Marnie, my sister, kind of focusing more as a city mouse outside of Boston, and I'm taking more of the country mouse approach living now in the quiet corner of Pomfret. In some ways, I think that's how we express ourselves artistically. Uh, my mom's a was a high school art teacher. She's still a wonderful artist. So she created in a more, you know, through drawing and painting. And I think we got that gene through food in our creating. By the time my students um, leave rectory and hopefully continue with Spanish, I hope they have this level of understanding um, and curiosity and wanting to continue learning the language. Ultimately have a passion in learning another language and understanding of um, different cultures. For those that are you know, interested in coming to Rectory, I think this understanding that we are a community and that's what I love so much. And I think that's why I've stayed here so long. And now that my kids are at preschool at CARE at Rectory, I think you have such an incredible incredible support system at Rectory, um, whether it be your teachers, your dorm parents, your fellow students, uh, you'll always have people around you who truly care um, and really want you to succeed here.